And of course, Sue, refreshments, biscuits. And uh, she's even got a little box for donations. I, I said to her at one of the meetings last season, you ought to put a sauce around. Because it shouldn't come out of your pocket well, or, the, no, but or the group's pocket. It really pocket. doesn't take a lot to just keep it ticking over, which is all. We're not trying to raise money out of it, just no. keeps it. So, really, I mean, if everybody puts a small amount in and, and thank you, everybody, for coming along. A nice, comfortable group. Nice, full of, full of questions, I hope, to, uh, to ask these two gentlemen. Um, we're, we're looking at a sort of half past eight finish, if not before. Yeah, yeah, quarter sort of half past eight. Just see how, it, see how it goes, if that's okay with you. That's yeah. right, yes. Yeah. We're going to, I, I'm going to ask each of them to just start us off, start the ball rolling by. Um, oh, I want to say something else, first of all. Um, thank you for inviting me to come up here today and be alongside these uh, famous faces. Um, but it won't be me next time, it'll be somebody else, won't it? So beware, you might be asked to come up and. Uh, do, the, do these duties next time. I feel like to spread it about. And, uh, <laughs> delegate. <laughs> delegate. <laughs> I know what you mean. Not sure these two don't know. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what one yeah. there. Yeah, no, 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 does she know about that? Yes. Um, so what I'll do is ask each of them to to tell us a little bit about how they how they got into professional football, where they started, and um, then maybe we'll take it from there. I've got a few questions that I might want to ask them on your behalf, but I'm sure you've got plenty of questions that you can ask them. Because they said to me before we started, that's how they like it. They like to uh, have people ask, firing questions at them. Then they'll talk about what you're interested in, I expect. So, well, Bob was here first, yeah. at Exeter City first. Tell us about how you got into the game, where that was, and perhaps how you got um, here. Well, I started into the game. I, I was a bit of a late starter, really, as far as schools football went. I got into a senior team at the school I was at, which is a secondary model school. I didn't play for the district side or the, the Birmingham side as, as such at the time. Um, I was about 15, six, or 15, and um, the Sports Argus, which is a local the weekend paper in Birmingham, uh, we're, Villa were running an advert in there, um, any players interested uh, that would like to have a trial, uh, write off them. Every, every player will get a trial. So I wrote off and got a reply, got dates to go back and, and have the trial, and then got invited back again, and, got, and so on for about five or six times I got back in. And then I was offered uh, a part of uh, an amateur contract uh, for 12 months, and at the end of the tw that 12 months, I was offered uh, a part-time contract, uh, which I think was about five pound, I think, something like that in those days. And then at the end of the following season, I was then offered um, a full-time contract. And Joel Mercer was the manager at the time, and uh, as Keith, we were just talking earlier on then. Uh, the signing on fee then was £15, and you got £15 a week to play in the first team. Uh, you, you also then got appearance money and bonuses with CFA play. But we got uh, a crowd bonus, and uh, it was a pound a thousand. But it didn't start until there was 33,000 in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you normally got about two quid a week. <laughs> Uh, and then that day developed, I had um, an extra season there then. And Joe Burse at the end of that, the 62 season, I think it was, he had a heart attack or he was taken poor and he finished. Then the assistant manager at the time was Dick Taylor. He took over. And then uh, it was myself and Jeff Sidebottom who were vying for the first team spot. They also, we had five uh, professional goalkeepers on the books at the time. Uh, so he, it was him and I that were vying for the first thing at the time, the start of the pre-season. And then on the Wednesday of the last week before the kickoff on the Saturday, um, Dick Taylor took me in the office and said, well, Jimmy Schooler at Cardiff is interested in if you'd be, like to go and have a word with him, see what he can offer you. So I said, yeah, okay. And then um, I thought, well, if he's willing to let me go, obviously I'm not part of his plans. <laughs> I'll go and see what I've got to say. And Cardiff City had just won the Welsh Cup the season previous, so they were in the Cup Winners' Cup, 
So well, they were in the second division at the time. Uh, so um, I went down there, saw him, and I jumped from fifteen pound a week to twenty three pound a week, which was a big rise in those days. And you got it every week as well. That was, and you, you first, in some places, um, your first, your appearance money you got once a week, but if you played two games a week then you should get it for the both games, which you used to at Cardiff, but I, I think when I came down here they didn't do that, I can't remember. Uh, so that's how I started, and that, you know, I got transferred into to Cardiff and had six good years there, playing quite a bit of European Cup Winners Cup football, we used to win the Welsh Cup virtually every season. And then that finished, and Johnny Newman, I think it was uh, Pete Shearing, uh, broken yeah. his arm. And I used to play in the youth team with Graham Parker, yeah. who was here at the time, and I think he must have probably had a word and said, you know, probably come down if you had a chat with him. So, and that's it. And I had a, uh, came down in the January for six months on loan, and then the end of that season, uh, I got another contract and stayed here for another six years. Eh? So, Did uh, Peter Shearing not get his contract renewed then? Yeah, no, he moved, I think he moved to Charlton, I think. Yeah. I think he moved to Charlton. Because you said you were the only goalkeeper for a while. Well, yeah, after, after that, there was about three seasons. Uh, he had uh, a couple of, um, oh, the lad who was at Lord used to run door with. Richard. Whistler? No. Um, Crabtree. Richard Crabtree. He used to call training and um, the policeman who died. Ian Main. Ian, Main. Ian, Main. Ian Main used to come training yeah. as well, so there was always one he could pull on if necessary. Mm. But for about three seasons, it was Wilson and ten others on the team. Didn't have a goalkeeper on the bench in those days. No, no, no. no. Well, we only had one on the yeah. bench, had one reserve. So was it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's unusual to come through the asking for a trial at, at a relatively late yeah. age, really. Then, yeah. It? yeah, yeah, yeah. An unusual route into the profession. Yeah. Thanks very much, Bob. Keith, okay. how did you get into the? How did I get into the game? Um, We'll go way back. I was, think I was, yeah, I was 15, and uh, Leeds United, Leeds United were interested in me, and this is going, you know. To, yeah, you were I was living in Birmingham. I was living in Birmingham, but Leeds came in for me, and uh, when I was 15, I took my mum and dad to Leeds to meet them up there, and uh, met Don Revy, and it was brilliant, and that's where I was going. I was going to Leeds, but being a young kid living in Birmingham, I was a naughty kid. I got into a bit of trouble and uh, I had to tell them about the trouble I got into and Don Revy, as soon as he heard I was in trouble, it was a case of no, we don't, we don't want the lad. So I could, could have been a different life, I could have gone to Leeds and done other things. But, what uh, year are we talking about last season? We were talking about 65 then, yeah. I would have been yeah, 15. It was uh, second division, no they'd gone up by then? At the time, that, no, they were one of the top teams at the yeah. time. But I was going there as a young kid, like, you know, and uh, anyway, I got in trouble, and uh, and then other teams came in for me, Warsaw, Birmingham, West Bromwich, actually, uh, I lived in West Bromwich, and uh, I chose Birmingham. I was advised to choose Birmingham, because apparently at the time they were the team that gave young kids a chance, and so I signed uh, for Birmingham in 66, in 68, after two years I signed professional, alongside Bob Latchford. We signed together on the same day. And we were going to be the future of Birmingham City, Bob and myself. They, they bred us to go up there. And then um, a scrawny little kid of 16 came along. <laughs> His name was Trevor Francis. <laughs> and that became hard work then. Yeah, there was me, Bob and Trevor. And as a 16 year old, he was super. He was fantastic. It was a case the three of us couldn't play. <laughs> Uh, for the first team. We did play for the first team, uh, the three of us at the same time, but it wasn't working. And I was always the one that was going to be left out. And uh, and what happens after that is if you're not playing, of course you want to play, you, have, you look for other things and you look to get away. And because all you want to do is play football. And uh, the coach there, Willie Bell, who was a coach, he was a former Leeds United player, he came up to me and said, uh, I've heard there's a club coming for you, Exeter City. And no disrespect, Exeter, I didn't know where Exeter was. <laughs> That's not disrespectful, I just didn't know where Exeter was at the time. And uh, I made a few inquiries and uh, they said, oh, it's beautiful down there, it's always sun shining. <laughs> that was what I was being told. And 
that's what happened. In, uh, I, stayed, uh, I stayed at Exeter from 66 till about 72, served the apprenticeship there, um, achieved going to the Youth Cup final with the youth teams. We did have a, a good youth side there. Myself, Bob Latch, but Trevor didn't play in the side because he was too he was, he was too young at the time. Uh, we reached the FA Youth Cup final, which was uh, something <coughs> special. And I think out of the team, there was only four of us that went on to make a career. And that would have been Bob Latchford, Dave Latchford, his brother played in goal, and Gary Pendry. He had a great career at Birmingham, he became Birmingham's manager as well. And there was the four of us really that made a career out of football. And uh, in 73, I came down to Exeter. That's, that's how I broke into the game, uh, going to Birmingham. Any questions so far from the... Don't ask me what the trouble was I going to. Why did Reedy not mind you now? Yeah. 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 Um, yes, Mark. Did, um, if memory serves me correctly, did you make your debut with, with Pete? Yes, Pete Hutch. Uh, Peter and I came down, we met on the same day, we signed on the same day, and our first game together was at... Uh, Workington, and it was a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> it was a nightmare. Yeah, we, there was only 600 people there. It was absolutely freezing there. Snow, ice, you name it, it was there. And after the game, Johnny Newman literally had to cut your shoelaces. It was cool. It was one hell of an experience. What's it like in that game? You played it well. Do you remember? <laughs> it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. I can remember seeing you make your debut up here. I can't remember the arm debut. I can't remember what game that was. I can't remember who you played, right? Certainly. Yeah. Peter and I came down and we we, we travelled. I travelled up and down for six months. And we stayed at the Windsor Hotel, opposite St David's. And we stayed, well I stayed there six months, Peter probably about five months. Um, so yeah, you know, Peter and I have seemed to follow each other. You know, and I joined Royal Mail, Peter joined Royal Mail, so we seem to have followed each other. We might look and look up your home debut. Yeah, well, I, I couldn't tell you who were the only. Yeah. No, just the first game. So Joe Mercer was your manager at Joe when Mercer you started at yeah. Villa, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Would he? Yeah. Would you rate him as a manager or? Well, I, I, well, yeah, because he gave me the start. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I only had ten games under the last ten games yeah. of that season when you finished. Yeah. Um, so that, I've heard a lot of stories since that he was. Um, not nice to the the regular players that were in the side. You had Mercer's Miners, he had a load of young kids yeah. coming through, you know, they were yeah. all uh, sort of 18, 20, 21. Yeah. Um, but there was a few of the older players that he sort of resented. Yeah. Like, but I never actually saw it, well, if I did, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Uh, nice club. Yeah. What was your impression of Don Reeve? Don Reeve, I didn't really get to meet him that much, yeah. you know, it was just. Uh, a family thing. I took my mum and dad, as I say, yes. and uh, said hello, basically. But it was more talking to the chief scout there at the time, yeah. and uh, so I didn't really get to see. Them. Yeah. I can remember seeing the players. Mm. Something that stays in your mind. I can remember seeing the players there. Billy Brennan. The big names. Yeah, the big names, and they were playing cards. Yeah, yeah they, were playing, they, could, they were playing cards in, in this room. Did they have a? A little cafe or so on this, at the edge of the grounds. So nearly all the grounds in those days, they had where all the players used yeah, to we meet for a cup of tea and a bit of toast or yeah, something. Yeah, we had one at Birmingham, but I can't remember at Leeds. No. They were in the ground at the time, like, you know, but uh, no. So, did you have that here? Somewhere to meet in a cup of tea? Tell you where we used to meet, where I used to meet. Used to go to no, that was <laughs> not before the game. What was in the. That was, it was the Hamby Bar. Yeah. In Sidwell Street, oh, yeah. KFC, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, the Hamby Bar. Yeah. Just, just go in there, have a cup of tea, and get a yeah. 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 But there was one at the villa, outside the villa ground. You know, do you remember going down to go into the ground? Yeah, there? yeah, the big steps. Yeah, yeah. Well, just to the left of there, right on the corner. Yeah, yeah. There was a little cafe shop there. Yeah. And they had a back room there. A room we made one on, on a Friday. And the card schools in there. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. So you haven't mentioned alcohol because that's not so much. I don't think. No. Well, Certainly not, not when I was a kid. Not when I was a kid. Training. It was mainly it was either cards in the in the um, in this cafe or down the snooker hall down at Witten. Mm. Mm. That's where most of the kids used to go in the afternoon in the snooker hall because the pubs used to be shut at two o'clock. Yeah. 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 So, if you're an apprentice, 
young player, on, you know, young member of the staff, what were you doing? Well, I, I, never went through, training and then I never went through the uh, apprentice. No, I, no, I went in, straight into it as a, as a full time. Uh, uh, used to clean the boots and everything. Yeah, my, my apprenticeship, uh, which I loved, I've got to be honest, there was 15 of us. And uh, on a Monday morning after an home team game, they split the two group, they split, split the lads up. And some would sweep the terraces and some would clean the boots. And you had about 50 pairs of boots to clean, you know, which was. Uh, Interesting. Uh, buckets of water. Yeah, buckets of water, wet then. Because in those days, there'd be about 30 odd pros on the Oh, yeah. Each, yeah. Each the but there was a total of 15 with all the yeah. apprentices. Yeah. 50, sorry, with all the apprentices. Yeah. See. And then they'd have two or three pairs of boots, wouldn't they? Yeah. Well, just the one pair. That's right, yeah. 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 But you used to fight to sweep the terraces. Because, <laughs> no, seriously, because you used to find money. Oh, <laughs> 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 you used to sweep the terraces. And the Birmingham terraces used to look like that. You know, they were yeah. really steep and you start from the top. Just went along each one, go down the bottom, and they used to burn all the rubbish. And they used to sweep the terraces when it was snowing. When the snow was all on the terraces, you used to sweep it. But uh, that was on a Monday morning, normally, after a first team arm game. And then in the afternoon, you'd, you'd go to a place called Elmden, like the ground at uh, mm -hmm. uh, the training ground. And you do the training in the afternoon. Yeah. But. Uh, you never forget your apprentice days. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> I really, really enjoyed my. Was that a bit nerve wracking, wondering if you were going to be offered a contract? Absolutely, yeah. Know. My manager at the time was Stan Cullis. Yeah. Um, he's, he's famous for being at Wolves, Stan. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he, uh, he was the one that signed me uh, professional, but he left shortly after that. And the, uh, the next manager was uh, Freddie Goodwin, who um, <laughs> used to play for Leeds. I think he played for Leeds. And uh, we got on okay, but it was a problem when Trevor Francis mm -hmm. came along. It was a problem I had to resolve myself, yeah. which I, I did resolve. Um, I was older at the time, I was about 21. So from 18 to 21, 22-ish, I was um, trying to gain the side and fighting to gain the side and it wasn't gonna happen. Yeah. So eventually I, I said to him I wanted to leave. He said, yeah, okay. And he put a, tra a transfer fee on my head of 25,000. And I said at the time, I said, 25, nobody's going to pay 25000 for me. They wouldn't have done that. So I, I went to the tribunal. I had to take the club to the tribunal, which was a, a massive thing for me. Because at 21, I was still a kid. You know, I was still a kid at 21. And I went to the tribunal. Just yourself. Anybody helping you do that? Yes. You mean by go with you? Is that the yeah. union block from the club? The people that were yeah. waiting for me to um, represent me was Terry Venables, Clive Lloyd, was the chairman of the PFA then, and Matt Busby. And they were basically on my side. And Terry Venables at the time, he was like this, some sort of secretary, but Cliff Lloyd was the main man. And they uh, defended me at, at the tribunal. And the decision was they'd re reduce my fee by 5,000 every month to see what happened. Eventually when it got to 5,000, that's when Exeter came in. And that's when the interest came around. Mm. But um, it was a horrible thing to do, but it, it was a case that I didn't want to just sit around there no. and not play. Yeah. That's right. Feel free to yeah. come in London. London. I'll tell you London. London. Yeah. Paddington. That's right, yeah. yeah. I went to London then. I went to the station in Paddington. <laughs> yeah. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah. Is that where you met the extra representative? No, 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 no. no, 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 no that, just... that was just to get the tribunal out of the way to, to, to resolve yeah. something yeah. too. Yeah. Over in those early days, how much time was spent on tactics, uh, formations, etc., with the players? How long was that sort of work carried out at that time? I think the tactics, it, it was basically 4-4-2. Four, four, you, yeah. you know, you always had two strikers. Mm -hmm. um, I can't recall ever saying, oh, 4-3-3. Four, four, three, three. Mm -hmm. I can't recall tactics where you had one player up front. You know, yeah. that, that would never happen back then, like, yeah. you know. And you didn't talk too much about them. It was a case of... Seriously, you just knew where you were. Yeah. <laughs> Get the ball. You know that number six was left half, and four was right half, and that's where you played in that position. I guess that was perhaps the case, yes. Yeah. And it was always the case again the ball forward. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was also a lot talk about the tactics. It's four four two or four two three. It was like well, what you uh, Don Revy brought in the WM formation, right, wasn't yeah. it? That's right, yeah. Which was like a loosely based four four two or four three three. But not as you you would have a system and you say well you. You bought this one, you bought that one. Yeah. Uh, but you... They didn't get. They, they, they didn't talk too much about the opposition. Yeah. 
No, it was okay. It's one of the craziest stories I heard was um, <coughs> it was the, the one used to, I'm terrible on remembering names. The manager used to wear the big hat, the big cigar. Malcolm Allison. Malcolm Allison. Malcolm Allison. When he was in one of the London clubs, and uh, he decided he was going to change the system altogether. He kept his old players numbered as well, but then he wanted to change numbers at the back. Yeah. So centre half would wear number eleven, <laughs> goalkeeper wear number six. Yeah. Said, That'll confuse him. Keep in mind number seven. <laughs> 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 Whenever you go, like them. Malcolm Allison, of course, won't return, will he? A couple years after he'd had the heart attack, he come back. Malcolm Allison, he was your when I was here. Sorry? Malcolm Allison was manager when I was a boy. Yeah. Yeah. So, talking to managers, what what managers have you enjoyed working under? Um, Well, the managers I've worked under has been Stan Collis, Freddie Goodwin, uh, John Newman, uh, Ron Atkinson, um, Paddy Carrera, and Paddy Carrera was at Northampton. Oh, yeah. on yeah. He got the same yeah. was there. <laughs> <laughs> or he left, no, maybe he just left. He, he left he a Christmas card, obviously. No, okay. <laughs> and uh, came back to Exeter, it was Bobby Saxton, Brian Godfrey, and Mike Green at Torquay, with Franco Farrell, basically. Oh, I've had a few managers. Yeah, I've had more than that. <laughs> <laughs> I well, got rid of most of them. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, mine was um, John Mercer, and then at the, when he finished that season, the start of the pre-season was Dick Taylor, who was the assistant manager. Then he carried on after that. Then I got transferred to to Cardiff, which was Jimmy Schooler, where it was not the nicest person in the world, but. The success I've had in football, I had with him. Under him, you know, he really knew where you stood with him because he was, he was the sort of manager that um, he would really make you feel very small to make you be better. If you know what I mean, you know, he would really knock you down and make you feel terrible in the dressing room. But you, you, I used to come up with the thing. Well, I'll just show you. You know, you mm. talk to me like that, and, and a lot of boys did. Uh, and then came down here was John Newman, of course, and then. Sack, I, I finished this, the last season under John when he finished and I was managing the second team and Bobby Saxton came in and then that finished I went to Weymouth for six months and Graham Williams was a the manager there. Well, that was about the subtotal of the managers that I had. Mm. There's a question from the gentleman in the corner. You still got the question? I was just, I was just going to say who, 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 was the, you know, who was the best and why? Uh, I don't think that any one particular was, was best because John was probably one of the nicest men. John Newman was probably one of the nicest, but he just didn't have that edge that would. No, I mean, the no. team, the team, after I finished, I would obviously say he got rid of me and the team got promotion, but he just didn't have that little noose or whatever it was to, to just push them on. And Sacco came in with virtually the same team yeah, and did it. So I, I can't really say. What was lacking in John? It was just a little thing lacking in there. Uh, Schooler did us really proud in uh, in the European games. You know, we did quite well in the second division, and uh, we had a few or four or five good seasons in Europe. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so the success I had was with him, but um, with um, uh, Joe Mercer, uh, we avoided relegation at the end of that season. So we kept we stayed in the first division as it was in those days, um, but it wasn't a roaring success. But I suppose the most success I had was with Jimmy Schooler. But he wasn't. He, if your lad was there and he didn't like him, you wouldn't want to know. He was he was not nice to some of the younger players. And he, you know, I've seen some young kids crying because they just clam up when he, they hear his voice on the training ground and they just clam up. They didn't want to play for him. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I was thinking about uh, C Cardiff because Cardiff, um, I, I, I saw them play, play quite a bit in, uh, in the late 50s and early 60s and they, they had some really good internationals uh, and I just wondered, uh, you know, if any were, were there when you were playing and I just wondered if they had any 
local derbies against Swansea. Well, that uh, no, because Swansea then were in the third division, I think, fourth or third or fourth division at the time. Uh, we used to play them in the Welsh Cup occasionally, but I think yeah. they did. We did one season. They came up and we played a couple of local derbies. Yeah. Um, when I went there, uh, Dilwyn John was the goalkeeper. Uh, I don't think Jimmy School liked him very much at all, but he was the the Welsh goalkeeper at the time. But then there was um, John Charles, mm. Mel Charles, Ivor Allchurch, Derek Tapscott, uh, Trevor Peck, uh, Alan Arrington, Colin Baker. They were all just finishing or in the Welsh team at the time. You know, a uh, long lad called Bernard Lewis, uh, Gareth Williams. Uh, so yeah, there was about eight or nine there that were. Well, what, what did you think of, I mean, John Charles, because he went on to Leeds, didn't he? And then oh, yeah, he, went he, he started at Leeds, didn't he? Yeah. And then he went to Juventus, then he came he back to, to Cardiff. Yeah. Uh, well, he was still a good player when he mm. came up. Best header of the ball I've ever seen. No disrespect to him. <laughs> <laughs> Best header of the ball I've ever seen in my life. Oh, he, he was magnificent. I think he was known as the gentle giant. You know, mm. I've never seen him really be nasty. I've seen him lose his temper with players, but I've never seen him actually... Be nasty and never see him. You know, he, he would stand his ground. He'll, he'll let you know what he's about, mm. but he wouldn't maliciously kick anybody. Mm. And his brother Mel was chalk and cheese. Really, Mel was a bit, you know, a little bit thick. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Mel. <laughs> but Ivor Allchurch, well, uh, one of the best left feet I've ever seen. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Just used to walk around and never really run, but he could ping the ball <laughs> left foot, magnificent. I remember him coming here and playing for Swansea because he went then to play for Swansea during the last years of his career. He right? very well did, yeah. yeah. I think Len did as well. Yeah, 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 so. probably. Yeah, well, I think Len was probably there before yeah. I went there. Oh, not ish, ish. Yeah. Yeah. So how far did you get with the Cup Winners' Cup? Um, Semi final. Semi final. We got. Uh, we played, I think that year we played Shamrock Rovers, NAC Breeder, and then we had Moscow Torpedo. And I think now, even now, I think we've still got the, the longest uh, travelling arrangements for a, a European match, because we should have played Moscow Torpedo in the Lenin Stadium in Moscow. Uh, when we got there, it was about two foot of snow. So we, we couldn't play there. We trained for one day in the stadium, or underneath in the big run. There's a running track that goes right the way around on the inside. We trained in there. And then they said they were flying us down to Tashkent, which is about 200 miles from the Chinese border. And uh, so we flew down to there and we played in Tashkent. And if I remember right, we beat them 1 0 in Cardiff, but we lost 1 0 there. So we had a third game. And that was in um, West Germany, Ellsberg, I think it was at the time. And we got a result there. We beat them 1 0, 2 1, something like that. Uh, and then we had to play HSV Hamburg in the semi final. And we went over there first, and we got a 0 0 over there, which was you know, incredible. Really uh, and then we had them back in Cardiff, and we lost 3 1. We'll never play for Cardiff again after that. That was the last one. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last one. School have got his revenge in the yeah. end. Yeah. Yeah. So, Keith, um, I would you, same as if you played under more Exeter managers when you were managers, when you were at Exeter, so yeah. how would you rate the managers, the Exeter managers that you played? The Exeter with? managers, yeah. I played uh, for Bobby Saxton, John Newman, and Brian Godfrey. Um, John Newman, who signed me, lovely fellow, really liked the fellow. Um, I was disappointed when I had to move on, but when you get players coming along like Alan Beer and Tony Kello, you know, someone's got to make the move. And Bobby Saxton, loved the fella. You know, he brought me back to Exeter, um, played, I enjoyed playing for Bob. Um, I was disappointed when he went to Plymouth. Um, he did try and take me to Plymouth actually, um, and I made a, a bad decision when I went to Torquay. I could have gone either way, um, but that was uh, that was something to do with contracts in the end. But uh, those two, fantastic, you know, really good managers. Enjoyed playing for both of them. Um, 
when Brian Gutfried came, he wanted to bring players with him, and he bought uh, Pete Rogers and Martin Rogers. So people have to move on, and I was the one that was going to move on because at the time I think we had John Sims, Ian Pearson, Pete Rogers, and myself. So someone has to has to give. You know, you can't have four strikers at a club like Exeter, and I moved on. But um, I would say Bobby Saxton. You know, I, I love playing for him. How difficult is that though when you you have other players competing for your position and you realise you do have to move on? Is that easy to accept? Or? No, it's difficult. It's, it's, it's very difficult. Um, I loved Exeter. I loved to be here. But when they bring a new player in, you're looking over your shoulder thinking, you yeah, know, what's going on? When John Sims came to the club, I'll always say to this day, I was better than John. But because a new player's come to the club, <coughs> someone's going to move. And. Uh, it is a difficult time. When I went to Cambridge, um, Ron Atkinson signed me from Cambridge, from Exeter, and I was gonna do a good job there. I was gonna play there. But I didn't know at the time, there was a lad there called Alan Biley. I'm not sure if you know about Alan Biley, but that season he broke his leg. And it, as it happened, it's just the start of the season, he was coming back to fitness. Now Alan Biley had a great career, he went to Everton, he had a good career. If you ever look him up, you'll see he had a great career. So he comes back just as I joined Cambridge United. So I was fighting for, I was fighting for my position there, which was very awkward because Alan was a very, very good player. Ron Atkinson, who was the manager, was brilliant. He really treated me well, <coughs> but I couldn't get in the side. He did everything for me to get me in the side, but it was all, it was very difficult, and uh, because the team was winning on a regular basis, as you know. That was the year Cambridge came up, Exeter came up with them when Exeter finished second. So it was very difficult for Ron, but he treated me very well, very good manager, for top manager, top man as a manager. But um, <coughs> it didn't work out for me there. And <coughs> strange things do happen. On the day he told me he was releasing me, because I'd only been up there less than 12 months, he uh, pulled me in the office and said, I'm going to release you at the end of the season. And my world was upside down. I, you know, I just, just moved to Cambridge. What was I going to do? And on the same day, I went home. I told the wife. I said, bad news. <coughs> on the same day, Bobby Saxton phoned me up. So whether there was a link up with those two, says, yeah, I'm releasing. Bobby Saxton phoned me up. He said, what's happening next year? So I'm being released. Whether he knew, I don't know. He said, well, don't do anything silly. I'll get back to you. So I sat around and... A couple of weeks later, Bobby Saxton found me up, and that's the way I came back to Exeter. Don't you think you come through, you learn to live with that? Oh, you know, yeah. It's never nice, yeah. it's never nice, yeah. but it's part and parcel of the game. You know, there's a kid when you're coming up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, like I said, when I was at the villa at first, there was five, five uh, professional goalkeepers for four spots at the time. And you was, when, the, when the team sheets yeah. went up, it was never that cheeky to start at the top and work your way down. I was at the bottom one and work your way up. It, it would be terrible, I think. I say that playing today, when you've got seven substitutes, mm. you know, because there's a lot of those players that uh, are substitutes week in, week out, and probably not getting games. Mm. And a lot of them are prepared to just sit there. Whether it's the money they pay them these days, I'm not sure. That's what everybody it's, says. Yeah, that's what everybody says. Didn't you ever feel if you were on the bench that you were not part of the team? Well, absolutely, yeah. yeah even if it was only. The 12 of you, yeah. the 11 in the team and the one on the bench. If, if you weren't actually on the pitch, you didn't feel part of it. When Brian Godfrey, wanted to be on yeah, when Brian Godfrey came to the club, I mean, he, he he had to get rid of players. I was one of Jimmy Giles was another one. He got rid of Jimmy at the time. And the, the story goes, the story goes that when he was telling Jimmy he was being left out the side, down at the cat and fiddle, he told him, and they were on the far side, and you could hear what Jim was saying. You know, <laughs> he lost it completely, like, you know. You can imagine Jim, what he was saying to him. And, uh, and he, he, all he was doing was leaving him out for a game, like, you know. But, uh, but uh, you can't, it's hard to accept. If you're not playing, and in those days, there was one sub, and you were the sub. You just didn't feel part of the team then. So what they feel like now, when the seven sat together, I'm not sure. I feel a bit like he said, sometimes you think it's just too easy to be someone. I mean, the squad will sit there and get me whatever it is they're getting now and just happy and go along with it. You know, but we, I, I never did it. I never felt happy to be sat on the bench. Yeah. I'd sooner be, like he said in the first place, when he got his first move, 
but you know, I'm going to move on. I don't want to put up with this all the time. But one person's move is another. You know, it's it's good for some. If as you move, somebody else has got to move on. Yeah. And yeah. likewise, when you go there, they bring somebody in, and it's your turn to move. You have to move. Yeah. When I came when I came down to Exeter the first time, I was to replace a, a lad called Dick Plum. Dick played at the time, and, and Odisha came to replace Dick, and at the end of that season, Dick moved on. I'm not sure where Dick went, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know if he went. But that's the reason I came. Well, it was from up the Oval Way. I don't know if he yeah. stayed yeah. in that sort of area. Because I was playing at the time with Fred Binney. Mm. You know, and uh, that's what happens. Someone comes and someone goes. It's part of the game, isn't yeah. it? Talking of Fred Binney, um, Barkington away was your debut, Keith. Yeah. Uh, next game at home, Colchester United, a one 0 win. Yeah. Benny was a scorer. Well, Fred was a goal scorer. Yeah, he, was, he was a good player, yeah. Fred. I mean, just scored goals. Yeah. He was. Um, they come along. There was Fred, Tony Keller, Alan Shearer. You name them. If there's a penalty, they grab the ball. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tony Keller didn't want to go out there and play well. He wanted to score goals. Yeah. You know, and that's what that's what goal scorers are. If I went out there. I think I wanted to play well. I didn't want to score goals, you know. I want to score goals, but you want to play well. Whereas goal scorers, the ones who get the many, many goals, they want to score goals. And it's a different mental attitude. And I played with two of them just like that, Tony Keller and Fred Binney. That's what they did, they scored goals. I often talk about players having a, knowing where the goal is, you know. They, mm. they, they want to get yeah. forward straight away, and you talked about playing the ball forward. I think when we were talking earlier. Or I think, same. yeah, back in back in the day when we played, it's a different game now. But when we played, if you pass the ball at the back three times, the crowd would go mad. Yeah. They would get the ball <laughs> forward. <laughs> Whereas now the, the the crowd now are more educated. The game's different. The academies now are taught to keep the ball, and that's why you'll see 20 passes in their own half. You know, it happens, and they're, they're not going nowhere. But that's the way the game's played. You know, but in the old days, it was a case of get the ball forward. You, you could not play the ball around at the back. Yeah. They didn't want the supporters didn't want to see well, that. We've said this before. When I was first starting, if the goalkeeper had the ball, it was like a diamond from the uh, and that way, and you never ever played the ball in that diamond. If you if you threw a ball in there or rubbed the ball or passed the ball to somebody in that because you know there was going to be defenders on top of it, it was always bad. Yeah. Yeah. Dump it up or out wide. Never in the middle. Now so did you have a specialist goalkeeping coaching? No. You, no. No. You would just put them yeah, on side. On one side and you just have players shoot. No, the goalkeepers work with each other mainly. Mm. Yeah, there's specialist goalkeeping coach now. What does Bob think now of the fact when goalies are not really like too hard because they can't use their feet properly? Of I thought it was pathetic. Uh, what do you think now? And do you think the goalies are suddenly now using their feet more? Or oh, definitely, not? definitely. Um, yeah. um, I would hate to be playing in it. No, I mean, my kicking was bad at the best of times. You, Jimmy Giles, at the back? Be interested? They all want to. No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, no, no. no. I wouldn't know. You, you, you adapt to it, you know, you, you come through these phases. You know, if, if, you, if I was a kid now starting, then you'd be all part and parcel of the game. But because it wasn't like that when I was playing, you know, was, I don't think I would like it. I like to pick, pick it up and roll it there and get it back and then roll it there and pick it back. Kill five minutes just rolling it back. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Did you always see. play goalkeeper then, or why, yeah. why did you play yeah. goalkeeper? I mean, was there something that. Just couldn't get in anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, when I was at school, I played right back or centre half. When you wrote for that trial, you were already a keeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was playing in a, a Sunday side then. Yeah. Yeah. Talking Bob about about goalkeeping, I mean, they always say he's got to be allowed to play in goal. Playing, playing that side. Just for that over the years, who who stands out to you as as the top two or three goalkeepers that either you've seen? Or I think going back to when I first started, when I was a kid, it was either Levy Agin or Gordon Banks at the time. Um, coming up through the ranks, 
Um, I was never that keen on continental goalkeepers. Yajin was like a, to me, he was like a, a British goalkeeper. But um, I always seemed to think that continental keepers in those days didn't like to catch a ball. You know, always over dramatic. But I, I think um, Joe Corrigan I used to like as a goalkeeper. And the other Bob Wilson, you know, yeah. he was sound. I scored against Bob Wilson. Did it? I scored against Bob Wilson. Talk us through it. Oh, good for me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, uh, it was at Exeter, uh, sorry, Birmingham, uh, playing the town, and I was playing fullback, because at the time, Freddie Goodwin was the manager, and he was trying to get me in the side. He played me up front, he played me in midfield, he played me at the back, at right back. And that particular time, I was playing right back. And I just happened to get forward into the box, Ball came in and I added it in, which was unusual for me. <laughs> but I did, I added it in, and that, uh, that was my only goal in the first division against Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which you can't one, forget. If you've yeah, yeah. only scored one, it's against yeah. Bob Wilson, you can't forget. That's a good <laughs> you underline that was the Arsenal Bob Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you ever score against? Did you ever play against him? I don't think so. No, no, no. I don't no. think so. What would be your most memorable games played for Exeter City, apart from the Workington game? <laughs> yeah, um, to be honest, I thought about this, and you don't remember particular games. You know, you remember things that may have happened. You know, mm. something during the game. Mm. And the game I can remember, to be honest, uh, for a reason, was when we played Liverpool in 1979 in the League Cup. Can anybody remember that game? You can remember it? Is it two legs? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> and their team was Clements in goal, Dugleish played, Soonis played, Phil Thompson played. They played the first team basically, and they were a good side. And we had a lad playing for us, T Tony Mitchell, I'm not sure you know. Yeah, and Tony was a man to man marker. He, he, you know, he just, if you said to him, mark that man, that's what he did. And Brian Goffey said to him, Mark Kenny Duglish, follow him, go with him, do whatever he does. And he did, he stuck to him and stuck to him for the first half. But we didn't know until after the game that Kenny, Kenny Duglish wasn't very well that day. He had a cold or flu or something. And he went up at half time and it was no goals. And Super Sub came on. David Fairclough. And he scored two goals. <coughs> Don't you remember it for that reason? You ask any of the players that played in our team that day, John, Jimmy Giles and John Delve, you ask them about the game, and that's the one thing they'll say. Kane Duglish went off, Super Sub came on and scored two goals. So you remember games for things that may have happened, you know. So did Dave Mitchell stay in the dressing room with Delve? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> 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 probably. Because he was confused, didn't know what to do. So, yeah. so you, remember, you remember games for that yeah. reason, basically. So you're on the field with, with those players yeah. playing against them. They didn't put out like a six changes or seven changes no, no, in no, those no. days. They, they, played the, they played the first team yeah. in those Do you days. feel outclassed? You, you know, on the night, like? we, no, on the night we did okay. I presume yeah. no goals at half time. We must have been happy. But as I say, I can't remember the game. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't remember things that went on during the game. Sometimes, unless you, you get sent off or you have a fight with someone <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> but this was something you remember for that particular game. Yeah. Um, you got any excellent really. memories? Um, yeah. Much the same as Keith, you, you tend to forget most of them. One, one of the, the I would say funny, but one of the, the ones I do remember for probably not the right reasons was when we played Torquay here on a boxing day and we won 4 2 in the end. And Clive Thomas was the uh, oh, yeah. And when I was at Cardiff, Clive used to come training with us, yeah. so I know him quite well. Yeah. And. Um, <laughs> I think it was Clint Bolton, yeah, centre forward. Clint Bolton, yeah. That was centre off, right, Clint? Oh, it, was, it, was, it was a big lad in front. Anyway, it's this. And I had the ball on the edge of the box and I was sort of bouncing it. And he just stood in front of me. And uh, I went to kick it and he just put his foot up. And you were supposed to put your foot up, wasn't it? Yeah. And of course, the ball hit the bottom of his foot, bounced down, and knocked it in the back of the net. It was 3 1. So I was a bit mad because I thought it was unjust and all that. So I'm 
there it off to the halfway line, throw it to Clive Thomas, and this has got to him, he just held his book up and he went, your name's already in the book, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I remember it for that, rather yeah, than... Yeah. That's what you remember games yeah. for, things that yeah. happened during the games yeah. or yeah. afterwards, like, you know. You, you mentioned about uh, um, uh, Trevor Francis. Yeah. And w what sort of memory have you got of him? Because of course he went on to play for England, and he was the first million pound player, wasn't he? Yeah, I got, I got great memories because um, as I say, we played in the same youth team. He was two years younger than me, Trevor. So I played in the youth cup final, but he was coming along at the time. So we did. I was still young enough to play in the same youth team. We didn't do any well that those, uh, that particular year. But um, he was a great lad. At 16, he had ability I've never seen before. He used to do things that you, you couldn't think of as a 16-year-old lad. He'd pick the ball up in his own half and he'd just go, push them towards a goal and score. I'm not sure if it was his debut, but he did score four goals against one, one team. I think it was Bolton at the time. And he was 16 at the time. And if you think about that, a 16-year-old kid doing that, mm. he was something special. Well, the only thing that did happen, to be honest, he was 16, he was young. When he came back for the following season, in pre-season, he put on a lot of weight. And everybody saw it, you know, you could see he had a bit of weight. And so he, he was becoming a man, if you know what I mean, from 16 to 17, he was growing up. But he was quick. His strength was his pace, very, very quick. And you talk about him being the first million pound player, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you remember, he came down here mm -hmm. yeah. when he just signed for the testimony. Yeah. 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 He was sat yeah. on the bench. And I was sat on the bench, yeah. yeah. And he was sat on the bench yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 And uh, that was only because there was snow all over the country at the time. And the extra, extra city pitch was the, probably the only one in the country that so they didn't have snow. And it was arranged within 48 hours, the testimony for Nicky Jennings, or poor old Nicky. But um, yeah, great, great memories with Trevor. Did Forrest put the uh, full team role in the game? Sorry? Did Forrest put the full team role in the game? I can't remember. Well, I, think it it was, I can't well. remember. What, yeah. I, can't I think remember. it was like you said. It Trevor was, was the only one on the bench, and <coughs> I think on the night there were thousands that came on the night. Mm. And yeah, I think it was about 10,000. Yeah, yeah, and they mm. just wanted Trevor, they wanted to see Trevor Francis. <coughs> <coughs> Clough yeah. wanted, I think Clough wanted to get his first game out of the way. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, he phoned, uh, the story is he phoned up the club, Ray Evans, I think, took yeah, the call Evans, and yeah. suddenly had to arrange a game. That's yeah, right. yeah. And did very well, actually. We might get Ray in to tell us about that one day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. Got a, it's a great, great lad, great lad, Trevor Francis. Yeah. Gentlemen, uh, yeah, I was just going to i got a crap, crap memory as well, but did, did we play Cambridge on the last day of the season? Yeah, and they were going to get promoted. Yeah, and you scored. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was ninety. Uh, that was um, I came back here in seventy eight. It was seventy eight, and uh, it's funny you bring that up actually because yeah. I was playing golf. I was playing golf uh, about two months ago, and a fellow I was playing. He said, "I saw you score a goal against Cambridge." And I said, "Did you?" He said, "He said yeah," and I said, "When was that?" He says. If you go into Google and put Cambridge, <laughs> yeah. if you go into Google and put Cambridge versus Exeter, 1978, you'll see it. So I thought, yeah, and I did it when I went home actually, and it's on there. And that particular game, yeah, that particular game was uh, on the big match on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. if people yeah. can remember yeah. that. They used to have a thing called the big match, yeah. and it was on there, and <coughs> it was the last match of the season, and Cambridge. We're pushing for a second promotion because they went up the same time as Exeter did, you know, in the 70, in 77, was it? And uh, they were good, they were pushing for promotion. It was the last match of the season, and they had to um, get a result to go up. And we went 1 0 up, and I did score actually. And you can see it on you can see it on Google. And uh, then they beat us in the end 2 1. But when I showed it, my son. I said, I can't remember anything about the game. And I couldn't remember, seriously, I couldn't remember anything about the game. And when they equalised, the crowd all came on the pitch. Honestly, they came on the pitch. And I said, I can't remember that. And then when they got the second goal, they all came on again, the crowd did. Now, I couldn't remember any of that. And my son said to me, he says, how can you not remember all the crowd coming on the way they did? 
But I've said the same to Jimmy Giles, and I've said the same to John Delve. Can you remember that game? And they, they can't remember the game. Yeah. But if you see it on the... Because it was on... Only because it was on telly, you know, because these days, technology, you see every goal all over the country. In those days, you have to be on the television to see goals, yeah. like, you know. And uh, they, they can't remember the game. And uh, my son said, I can't believe you can't remember all the crowd coming on the way they did. And as soon as the final whistle went, I mean, everybody just ran to the changing rooms. And they, they got promotion. And that was the second one uh, running. But uh, I, could, I couldn't remember anything about that game until I saw it on, on, you know, on the Google. Talking of 16-year-olds, we've got one here. What, what's your impression? Um, and Yes. He's got potential. Mm. Yeah. yeah. He's got potential. How long he'll stay here, I'm not sure. Um, he will. He will get removed at some stage. Uh, I, I think, think Exeter, Exeter City will do the right thing in looking after him and do what's yeah. best for him. I hope. Well, that's um, what I'm talking about. I was going to put him in a bit for him. Uh, yeah, I've heard that rumour. You just had to wait and see on that. I hope. I'll, you look at what players have done. I mean, I think uh, Moxie is the one who's gone on and played a lot of games. But then Matty Grimes was a lovely player. And he's like being moved around a little yeah, bit. Even getting at least. Yeah, he's yeah. moved around. That, that's a shame. That's a shame. You know, and you like to see these players because I'll tell you now, it's easier to come this way, like well, I probably did, and I did, and Jimmy Giles, and all the players that I know came this way. Going that way is difficult. To go from the second division to the Premiership is very, very difficult. And there's not too many people that do it. Yeah, Matty Grimes is good enough to do it, and I hope he does. Mm settle somewhere and, and starts playing on a regular basis. Last I heard he was at Forest Green. No, no, he's not there. No, he's not there. He was. He's at uh, Leeds, I believe. Leeds, Leeds. He went to Blackburn. He went to Swansea. They loaned him out to Blackburn. He's been. To, he's at Leeds now. I think, I think he's at Leeds there, yeah. with the former Swansea manager. And, you know, you just want to see him settle somewhere because he's a lovely yeah. player. You yeah. want to see him settle somewhere and, and get lots of appearances under his belt. Good lad. Yeah, good lad. Yeah. But talking about Ampadu, He's got great potential. Yeah. I'd like to see him give him a bit more of a chance, then, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they're, yeah. you know, they're safe. Yeah. yeah. Be a problem. yeah. Show a bit of flair. I think we might be safe now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> isn't it? no, you, you come here most weeks now, don't you? Yeah. Watch, watch the games. The pitch is different. The yeah. You know, it's, it's, you played on, on some mud in your years, I suppose. Was allotments, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 This one wasn't one of the best, was it? No, 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 Not no. down this bottom end here. Yeah, yeah, down the bottom, Well Street end, yeah. in front of the um, the bank, down that corner. It was a terrible wind. It looked like the tide coming in every time it rained. <laughs> so, do you look at it now and think oh, it was different in my day, better, worse, or whatever? I mean, what the pitch? Coming, no, the the game. The, the way the game is, the game. Do you, do you enjoy it as well, you obviously do? Because you come back here and you meet up with your mates. Yeah, we, we enjoy the social side to it. Yeah. 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 Social side is fantastic. Yeah. Um, I love to watch the lads play. I love to watch the games. Yeah. Um, but you see, what we just talked about earlier, it's it's a different type of game. Yeah. Now. Yeah. You know, and some some of it we don't really understand. We tend to, you know, we don't see proper tackles anymore. Mm. You know, you don't see somebody get in there. But not, Break somebody's leg, but let them know you're about. You know, it's, you don't see that anymore. Champ sits next to me in the in the main stand. He says, as soon as something happens in the goal area, free kick to the defending team. Mm, yeah, you know, yeah. Somebody jumps up to the keeper. Yeah. It's a shame. Well, yeah. It's a shame, but uh, that's that's the game these that's, days. The way the referees are protecting keeper, I'd love to be playing for that. Yeah. Wouldn't like to be these pass packs on my left foot. Bad enough on my right foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, it, I don't know. It's, it's a different game then, yeah. all round. Technology's taken over the game, really. Mm. You know, technology's fantastic these days, and it, it, I just wonder where the technology is going. You know, I mean, there was, a, I just mentioned it about uh, being on the television. You were lucky to be on the television, mm. you were lucky to see a goal. But you see every goal in the country now. Everything's recorded. Everything's yeah. recorded. Used in training. You can imagine the managers using all that film on Monday morning or Tuesday to show the players and you can just imagine what goes on in the changing rooms now and managers you see all the managers taking notes all the time you just wonder where the technology is going to and I think the technology at the moment where 
they in the Premiership where if he goes over the line, within a second they can say it's a goal. That's great. That's great. I just hope they don't take it a little bit further for offsides. I mean, you see these pundits on the telly, all the ex-pro uh, players, they stop the camera and the player's offside by about six inches. And they can see that, you know, and that's technology. But I hope they don't bring that into the game. The goal, the goal decisions. line, yeah, yeah, penalty decisions. We may not see it, but I think it will come eventually. I'm sure it's going to come because it's technology now and it's coming into the game. I, I think mean, they're trying to rugby's the same. If you, if you look at rugby, they can stop a game and yeah. make a decision within seconds. And I just, uh, I wouldn't like to see it, but I think eventually it will come. We may not see it, but it will come. Do you think in your day at this club, um, or any of the clubs that you were at, you felt you were closer to the fans than maybe some of the players are now? Because in your day, you, you tended mean, to live more locally. Do you mean player whereas, on being close on the pitch? No, I was close? thinking more on the sort of after the game, mixing with the fans, yeah. as opposed to these days, there tends to be a tendency to get in the car and drive yeah. off no, on a motorway somewhere. You, yeah, you're 100% right. Yeah. I think yeah, yeah. we've, we've talked about this before. We've right? talked about yeah. it. And yeah, we, we have a drink after the game here, and when we're going home, I walk through the car park and I normally see the players jumping in the cars. Mm. You know, you can see them. It's a shame, but we were made, I think we were made, but there's no way we could have travelled from Bristol or no. Birmingham. Um, I think we were told I, we, I, had to, we had to move down. The only way I, I travelled was for about three weeks, because I came down on loan from Cardiff to Rio, uh, but after about three weeks, it put me in the buy stock. Yeah. yeah. You know, obviously, you come down Monday yeah. and Friday and then. And I suppose if you were to be part of a losing team and then be filmed back drinking with fans and whatever, people these days with social media would simply say, well, you know, these players don't care. Yeah, but yeah, most, most of the lads, this, this generation, you know where you could have found the boys if you went on a Thursday yeah. night. If, you know, they used to go out for a drink on a Thursday night. But you always, you know, most of the players went out for a drink Thursday night, which you, you shouldn't have done. I mean, I can recall myself and Alan Beer, and I played with Alan, um, <coughs> all the lads were there. And who walks in the club is Johnny Newman. He was walked. He, he expected to find you. Yeah, there. he yeah. walked in. He had a look, look round, and he walked out. Talking <laughs> 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 uh, about things you remember. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. But, but the thing is that sorry, Bob. Go on. But the thing is that he walked in, walked out, and on the uh, Saturday we played Newport, Newport County away, and he wasn't speaking too much. Like you know, he wasn't saying a lot, and we beat New, Newport two 0 and I scored and Alan Beer scored, funny enough. <laughs> and uh, he pulled us after the game and he said, uh, one at a time, he used to always sit at the front of the coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he, he, he sent Jack Edwards up. I went there. He said, I'm fine, you're £10. That was it. He, he, you know, and he said the same to Alan Beer. He said, I don't want to do, uh, catch you again. So, you know, but he, he didn't say nothing from the Thursday to the Saturday after the game and then he told us he was going to find us. And uh, it would have been 25 quid if he would have lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might have been more. But I mean, he, he treated it in the right way, in a yeah, sense, because it, it was a known thing in those days. Players went out on a Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Well, we, we played at Chester one year, and it was Tony Moran, Jimmy Blaine, and it was Barry Rowan as well. Four of us, we were sharing. We'd found a, a fire escape down the back. <laughs> it was New Year's Eve, and we played New Year's Day at Chester. And uh, we, four of us met, we were deranged after we'd had the evening meal and popped up the road for a pint, you know, in the pub. So anyway, we walked up the road, there was no pubs, we ended up by like, going into the town in the end. You know, we must have walked about three miles. <laughs> anyway, we had a couple of pints, nothing stupid, we just had a couple of pints, it was all merry, everything was going on nicely. We got a taxi back about half ten, dropped us up the road from the hotel, we walked up the back, around, up the fire escape, got, in, got into bed, like, about quarter to twelve. <laughs> oh God, we've been done. You know, we can, all going to be sent home or something. Anyway, it was Jack, uh, not Jack, it was um, Keith. Oh yeah, yeah. Keith. Was, <laughs> and he said, "Boss wants to know if you want to come down for a drink for see the new year in." Oh no. Anyway, we got a result. We won two one, I think, on the, on the, on the, on the two or three one on the, on the day. So, and you went down for the drink. Happy, happy went, oh yeah, because uh, <laughs> now, now I've already been out for long. Yeah. 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 Bob, Bob's got a book there, Jack Charlton, and the stories in there, they're all about that. I mean, Jack Charlton, when he was manager of Ireland, was completely 
like we were, I suppose. He used to say to the players, night before a game, go and have a couple of drinks, lads. And he let the lads go out day before a game. And this was when he was our Irish manager. And all the players are talking about it in that book. And they'll tell you, that's what Jack was like. And uh, it was a known thing in those days. You know, it wasn't, uh, the managers probably that came in and tried to stop all that may have, may have had problems with the players, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> heroes in football. <coughs> Who are your heroes? Did you ever meet them? Um, well, I think probably in front of the kid, John Charles. Uh, the first time I walked into Villa Park, the goalkeeper there, Nigel Sims, you remember Nigel yeah, Sims? Yeah, big yeah. lad, and I sort of sat next to him, that's my adult. And Derek Dugan, oh, he was yeah, in the dressing yeah, room yeah, as well. Yeah. So there's all the players that you, you knew. Yeah. And, um, but the other one I said was Lev Yazin, I yeah. never got to meet him at all. Yeah. But, uh, he was an idol that I used to look at in, yeah. in those days. Yeah. And another one, he was your old boss. When I was a kid, Gil Merrick. Oh yeah, Gilbert yeah. Merrick. Yeah, because he was a goalkeeper. Wasn't That's he? right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, my era um, would have been Jimmy Greaves. Yeah. Mine. And uh, Mine too. I loved him. I loved him. And I played against him, funny enough, um, in a reserve team game. And I was talking to Steve Perryman about a month ago, and I, I reminded Steve. I said, "You probably won't remember this." I said, "But we came to Tottenham in a midweek game." It was in the football combination. I says, and uh, we was playing Tottenham. And I said, on the night, Jimmy Greaves played, Alan Gilzean, Steve, Steve played, and there was someone. There was a couple of really well known. He says, I remember that game. I said, no, you don't. I said, you're just saying that. He says, no. He said, I remember that game. He says, they were resting us all. <laughs> you know, playing in the reserve. Anyway, we played, and Jimmy Greaves was there. And our manager at the time was a fellow called Mike Kelly. Yeah, 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 and uh, he said to this lad in the side, says Alan Charles, he says, I want you to pick Greaves up and don't go anywhere, stay with Greaves all the game, you know. Anyway, we came off the top time, 3 0 down, and Jimmy Greaves had scored three. <laughs> <laughs> but then Jimmy went off, he, he went off second half. So that's another little thing that you remember yeah, yeah. what the manager said. He, he said, uh, and he said to the lad, he, he really went into the lad at half time. He said, I told you to go and stay with him, and all this and that. But Jimmy Greaves was Jimmy Greaves. Oh, he, did, he didn't stop Jimmy Greaves from scoring goals. Yeah. So that was a memory I've got, yeah. you know. And I've, I cherish that one memory. Yeah, I think you talk about that. I can remember we played uh, West Ham. I was at Cardiff and we played West Ham in the semi final of the League Cup, two legs home and away. And uh, school, the first one that was at Upton Park, and he, and he was going down through the team. And I said, I'll be more, he said, he can't play. <laughs> he'll, he'll just walk around, he can't, he's the dumpy. He lost 5 1. <laughs> Yes, but in the first leg of... That was the first leg yeah. right? <laughs> I didn't play in the second leg. They lost 6-1 in the second leg. <laughs> Do you still play now? Do you still play? Because you played as Legends team, so we haven't seen that recently. Do you still play either of you? No, no, no. no, no. Would you like to? No. <laughs> it's walking football. Because we have a few of us in this room Probably who play for the club. <laughs> He's got a new um, I've got a new knee. We no, just respect to Norman now. We could do with a goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're a bit short, aren't we? And you know inside front. every goalkeeper is a centre forward trying to get out. <laughs> Mike? Well, you, I think we've established how much football has changed over the years. How much have supporters changed? I mean, from, from, from when you played to what you see. Well, some of us have always been territorial, haven't they? Yeah, yeah you're, still, you're still here, Mike, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but you've been through all these phases, you know, of the real bad times, and the, the hooliganism on the terraces and all that, and uh, the fences going up and the fences coming down and putting seats in. You don't see it very, very often now in stadiums. Like, all the violence that happens now is outside the stadiums, you know. Because they're all on the phone and they're saying, oh no, it's so and so and so and so. I mean, have, have supporters' expectations, are they higher than they used well, to? I think they're higher now. I think they're higher now. But the, I think they've grown with the, the game as well, though, Mike. Simply because, like I said earlier, supporters in the old days wanted to see goals, they wanted to see action up yeah. in the box. Now it's a different game mm -hmm. and they pass it to the bow to the back. And I think the supporters accept that now. Mm -hmm. You tell me, do you accept the, the way they pass the ball and keep possession? 
because that's the way all teams do it now. And England. I think I think a lot of them know that. Look, so the expectations is more, and I don't know whether football fans have always been fickle. They've always been fickle. You know, I mean, like him or not, him with his tail that. When he's winning, when they're winning, he's the best thing since sliced bread. Start of this season, get him out, you know. And it goes, it goes in cycles, and and the supporters are the same. You know, you three bad losses, and you go from four and a half thousand to three. Another loss, and it'll probably be two and a half. Another two wins, and you go back up again. You know. so three points so. makes a big difference, so that. Yeah, yeah, of course it does. Yeah. yeah. How big an influence do supporters have on? When you were playing, I mean, did they, um, could they destroy you? Could they? Could oh they yeah, destroy yeah, you yeah. They probably more oh, so yeah. in those days, because you know, because it's a bit quite a smaller ground, a bit quieter, not so many people in there. You hear it, it gets a bit mm. personal. When it's a big crowd, you just would no roar. It's a noise, you know. <laughs> yeah. But I can remember being behind the, the other end there, and you know, people slagging me off and all that. And I just said, "Well, come on, you take the shirt, yeah. and if you, know, you come and have a go." I was, I was never a favourite out here with the supporters. I was never a favourite with the supporters in the sense I played with Tony Kello, who was a favourite. I played with Alan Beer, who was a favourite. Fred Binney, who was a favourite. So it was, all, it was very awkward for me. But the one occasion I, I, I bring the story up, when Brian Godfrey was manager here, I, was at, I wasn't on the side, I was sat on the bench, I was substitute, and I can remember it was Doncaster, and the crowd on the, this side in the, the old days was shouting, Bowker, Bowker. Which you know, I'm sat there thinking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was great, and they wanted me to come on. <coughs> I came and I scored two goals, so that was another memory. But that was probably the only time the crowd shouted for me, because I was I was never a favourite, you know. The crowds have always got a favourite, you know. Yes. They've always yeah. got a favourite, and uh, Wheeler Wheeler's a lovely. He's a favourite out here, you know. They'll always have favourites and they'll always have a player who doesn't yeah. quite do enough. Pick yeah. on somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, we have to go play skittles. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. All the best. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Can I, can I ask you your, your views on the way um, the press and supporters have treated Arsene Wenger? Well, I love the fella. I think it's fantastic. I think he's, there's managers, lots of managers who would love to have had his career and, and won what he's won. Personally, I'd like to see him go when he wants to go, you know, which I, I, I hope he does and I hope he will do. But you've got to be careful what the supporters wish for, you know, because yeah. um, things can change. I mean, any manager who's been manager of Tottenham over the last... 20 years would have loved to have uh, had the success that Wenger's had. So, uh, I don't know, Mike. I, I, I'd like to say that uh, he'll go when he wants to go, but he's getting a bit of pressure, but I think he's been treated... I think it's a small minority, but normally they're the ones that shout the loudest. You know, so, so maybe um, he's listening to the bigger crowd rather than the small crowd. Yeah, but I think the, the press are, are in a... They want changes of what... Yeah, of course they do, so they're, they're making it worse. Yeah. And, you know, they by having a go at him, so they're swaying other people who would think, well, well, maybe give them a little bit longer. But, oh, no, no, they're right, let's get rid of him now. And I think it's all right, like Keith said, I'm, you know, I think we're both leaning on an open door here. We both like to see him go when he wants to go. Because somebody's got to have some big groups to fill when he's finished. Because he's, he's brought so much into the game, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Revolutionised. Oh, yeah, certainly. Uh, tactics and yeah. He's coming back and winning the back. Well, I mean, you don't see uh, many managers now <coughs> stay at a club like Tisdale, no. Ferguson and Wenger, you know, they're the ones. Yeah. You won't see a lot of that now. No. You'll have Pep. Pep will move on after three or four years. Yeah. They all do it. It's, it's, it's a way of life now. Well, when I ask you, I mean, Tisdale will be the longest. Yeah. Yeah, that's so right, yeah. Know, yeah. Manager in the entire football league. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very difficult when I... A manager, it's a, a bad time, you know, when they it's a bad time because you can guarantee they'll be sacked. A manager, a manager gets the job basically to be sacked normally. Yeah. And there's very few, there's very few that stay there 10 years. Oh. Very few. What, 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 
what do you think makes Exeter such a unique club in the sense that, I mean, normally Tisdale would, at most other football clubs in the, in the country, particularly pre-Christmas, would have would have got the sack based on the whole results. Mm -hmm. not, knowing what, not knowing what works behind the scenes, Mike, it's, right. hard, it's hard to answer that. Yeah. You know, it's all not, speculation. Yeah, you're not yeah. sure what he's like with the players, how he treats the players, we don't know. Always rumours. You know, yeah, you some people it. say the good and the bad. Yeah. So and you got the. And you've got know, a. Is it the trust that runs the club now? Mm -hmm. You know, so we don't know. We don't know what yeah. goes on behind the scenes. You know. So very do you think the club is is unique in the sense that, like at the start of the season, you hear the at the start of uh, this season, lots of managers would have had the sack. Mm -hmm. It yeah. proves sometimes to persevere with someone. You know, yeah. you know, it's a cycle. It'll, it'll work its way round. You know, the good, the good times come and go, and the bad times come and go. But how long do you want to sit and help him out? You know, this, this is what managing football teams are all about. Now, yeah. how long do you give them? Yeah, I know. I used to say, well, maybe a kid's probably a couple of seasons. Now it's a couple of weeks, isn't it? <laughs> it's instant. They want it instant. I was, I was manager at Biddeford in Chalton Town when I finished my career, like you know, and. Uh, when I was manager of Biddeford, we had, we had a, a good time there. Sean Taylor, Sean played for me at Biddeford. And then we moved, I moved on, I was there for five years and I moved on to um, Taunton. I took over at Taunton and I was there for five years. Oh. Yeah, so it's, it, it was great periods. I, I loved being a manager, really, really loved it. But after Taunton, there was nowhere else to go, basically, around here. Oh. Yeah, that was, that was it. But um, that's, that's, that's the length of time. I think yeah, a lot of the professional players who have been here and, and moved here, you know, that Exeter, I know Plymouth is the end of the line, but Exeter's like the end of the line, you know. Mm. You come there, you've got to come back again, haven't you? you know, whereas around the Midlands, up north, London Air, there's all these other clubs on the roundabout. But there's, there's only the three clubs down here to be on a roundabout. Uh, it, they tend to need a lot of persuading when they get to come back. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I think going back to the managing of our club, you, you've got Tisdale, Paul Tisdale, but you've got Julian Tag and Steve Perriman. It's almost like a three, and it, it's not just Tisdale, in my opinion. I mean, I know he has a lot to do with the team, I guess, but the whole structure of the club, and, and Paul Tisdale has worked very hard on the structure of the club, hasn't he? They're getting the training facilities mm. up to scratch. Well, I don't think you can you can. Um say anything about the facilities here now because when we were here mm. they were either over the back behind the cow shed or the university you know, up the uni mm. on the all weather pitch you wasn't there. No, no no the all weather it was there but it wasn't there uh, the all weather pitch up the uni but you couldn't use it if it was raining I think <laughs> I had about two people you came while I was there Captain Fiddle came while yeah. we were yeah. there we used to go down Pool Lane that's right it was still all university ground we were there Pool Lane did you train on this pitch still? No, I'll leave Sunny Sunny Clark wouldn't be here. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Peter, Peter and I used to come down on a Thursday, Thursday afternoon, and try and train out there. And Sunny wouldn't let us. No, no. You know, Jack Edwards would say, go on, get out there. But Sunny was, no, keep off the pitch. Yeah. Which, you know, that was Sunny. He was, he was fantastic for that. Yeah. And sometimes you've got um, Wyvern Barracks. Mm. Here's the pitch up there, mm. Wyvern. Yeah. It's, it's coming up to 8 o'clock. I, I don't know if anybody else has got any burning questions. Yeah, uh, what would you say you've got new players these days, like Dave Bikai, uh Tony Adams, the tough cyclists, since they've all gone? Yeah, you won't get those type of players now. In the, no. the way the game's being played now, that those players won't last very long now. Do you think there's too many yellow cars can play? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. For, for what we, we talked about in the seating, that was one we saw on there earlier tonight. It was, and they run with the thing, you know. And then and these, the boys got his second yellow card. Got second. It, it's, some of it's pretty pathetic, really. But, you know, um, big hard luck players now. You can be up and strong, you know, but uh, I don't think you'll see them anymore. They don't, they won't last. The referees are clamping down on them. There was talk at the weekend about FA Cup football. The, the, the lower teams tend to get away with harder type tackling. Sutton United, perhaps. Oh, I don't Lincoln City, the, I don't know. But one of the main but talking points, we're not going to remember, 
playing in cup matches where if you were one of the lower teams playing one of the bigger teams and you said get stuck into them, let them know you're in there, yeah. in the faces, you know. Yeah. Like I said, you don't have to break the legs and everything, yeah. but yeah. you've you got to be tight up and just don't give them breathing space. Because obviously, they're playing in a better league because they're better players. Yeah. So you've got to try and level it out a little bit. There's either play them at our place, which is a bit of a cabbage path, or you've got them play up there, which is a lovely, nice big ground. Well, they do different grounds now, and lovely big grounds and stroke the ball around. You, know. you don't want them to do that. You've got to upset them a little bit one way or another. Some tactics come in with us, sort of. Yeah. They can't use the tactics we used to use. <laughs> Any other burning questions? It's been brilliant. I'm enjoying it. Wandering, enjoy wandering it. down here, here, wandering down memory lane, hearing yeah, the stories. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's been good. And we come up to date a little bit as well. We haven't always been back in what Mike calls the good old days. I mean. We've got some pretty good days here. Now he's pretty good at this club, I think. It's, oh, yeah. it's lovely think so. to see oh, the ex-players yeah. back. Yeah. And, and I mentioned earlier, I think we do look after our ex-players very well. We and in turn, they'll look after us by coming here and mm. sharing stories with us.